Being born or the process of giving birth is absolutely one of the most impactful moments in the world. But I'm always surprised of how little people know about the birthing process. We humans spend hours upon hours learning about different song lyrics and TikTok trends and sports teams and players. And often we know very little to almost nothing about the process of being born. It's kind of insane how this vital life moment is often completely ignored or everything we know is just from like few Hollywood movies. Now, after having two kids at home with my wife and being the doula and the assistant midwife to those birds, and then now waiting for a third one as we're filming this, I've learned a lot and it made me more and more appreciative of the process of a home birth, but also the miracle of birth in general. Now, obviously I'm not a woman. I have never given birth. I never will give birth. And in our family, and which I think should be in almost pretty much every family, the 100% of the decision of where to give birth and how to give birth is on my wife. The, the woman, in my opinion, should make all the decisions and the guy should make zero decisions and then just support her in the way she's comfortable at giving birth. That being said, I think everyone, including the dads, and us as a society should understand this birthing process. It's truly the miracle of life. We've all been through it. And there's a lot of misconceptions about birth and a lot of like myths and lore that are just not factually correct. And I, that kind of bothers me a little bit. I think more people should know at least the statistics and the facts around birth. Every birth is individual. Every situation is individual, but overall like, I think there's just so much people don't know, which inspired me to learn more about it and now make this video. But since I've never given birth and never will, I wanted to have my wife, our original doula and our current midwife to come and share their knowledge as they're the experts in this process. My wife is now also a doula herself. So I wanted you to hear from them themselves on their thoughts about home birth, hospital birth, pros and cons and in just general, what is important in a birthing process. My name is Cora. I um, have given birth at home twice, and I'm preparing for my third home birth. And I'm a doula. My name is Anya Castile. I'm a home birth midwife right now and childbirth educator. I work in Austin, Texas, and I have a seven-year-old son. Nine years ago, I went to India and got my training and felt deeply from somewhere from the universe that I need or I have to or must support women. Well I started um, having babies in my first baby was born in 1973 in Tucson and um, at the time there were no it was illegal to have a baby there but there was a lot of counterculture happening. And um, there was a Sufi group and there was a yoga group. And the Sufi group, the, the family that headed that group had had five babies at home by themselves together. And they kind of became the Tucson underground midwives. So I started in that yoga community and had a couple of babies at home. And in that community, there was a tradition amongst us that when someone had a baby, and there were many of these yoga centers around the United States, and when someone had a baby, someone from another community would come and take care of her for 40 days. So cook all the meals for the family, give her massages, hold the baby when she's taking a shower. And so we all did that for each other. And I went to help a friend of mine. And when she went into labor, she called the doctor and the doctor fell back asleep. And um, I ended up catching her baby. I think the general idea in America is that, I think it's changing, I think it's shifting, COVID kind of shifted it, but I think historically it was that you're like pretty hippie and radical and crunchy and potentially endangering your child. Whereas now there's been so many celebrities like Rumor Willis and people who are bringing it to the forefront and are having home births and speaking about it. And I love that and I think it's becoming much less radical. The first question I wanted to ask is, how did you get here? Uh, as humans have been giving birth for a long, long time, mostly at home or in natural ways, 
Uh, but now like a third of children are born surgically with a cesarean. And what is the history of home birth process in America per se? Until the 70s, women were knocked out or anesthetized or somehow removed from the process. And so people didn't even, women didn't even know what happened to them many times. So this is where the resurgence of midwifery was born out of that, out of decades of women in America giving birth that way. And finally, in the 70s, people were like, we're not doing that. Despite giving birth at home or in your hut or cave was the norm for us for hundreds of thousands of years, uh, you'd be probably surprised to hear that once hospital births emerged, it was illegal to give birth at home after that in many places around the world. I came to the States because I knew that I wanted to have a home birth. Probably because of my doula work. Um, at that time, I lived in Hungary, in Budapest, where home birth is illegal. Same as in Russia, where I am originally from. So women can have a home birth if they want, but no one can legally assist them. So it's illegal to help women having a home birth. To many people's surprise, U.S. is actually one of the more lax and progressive places as comes to home birth. And it's actually easier to give home, uh, do a home birth in America. Before moving to Texas, we lived in California. And I always thought of Californians as like the hippies, the progressive, the liberal, like do whatever you want. And I was surprised to find out that the, the most natural things on earth is giving birth at home was, was harder than in Texas. I didn't see uh, growing up in Europe, Texas as a, uh, a progressive place where home birth is okay. I guess Texans also love freedom and sovereignty. You do you. So I guess that makes sense. But to better understand the problem, maybe it's easier if we dive a little deeper on the differences between a hospital birth, a birthing center, and a home birth. Yeah, here in the States, there are three different options for a woman uh, to have a baby at the hospital, at the birthing center, at home. Uh, basically, the biggest difference between birthing center and hospital versus home that you have to go there in labor, which is um, sometimes not very comfortable, let's say it this way. I always say to the uh, people who are trying to figure out where they want to have a baby, I say, if the provider comes to your house, everything's gonna be on your terms generally let's say it this way because if you go to someone's house you uh, do not bring your own rules there they have their own protocols they have their own standards they have uh, the things that they used to and they are comfortable with the biggest difference between two of those basically birthing center uh, operates with the midwives only you cannot get epidural over there, obviously. You cannot get a C-section over there. So if you plan to have a completely natural, unmedicated birth, that's a nice middle ground, I would say, between home birth and the hospital. Uh, but at the same time, people, I think, do not understand that the same equipment that every single birthing center has, every single home birth midwife have and we bring all of this to you instead of you coming to the facility. So I can give a little more definition to the difference between midwifery care and OB care. So in the prenatal period um, we're seeing people at the same frequency that doctors see people but we our visits are generally an hour long and we're covering all the territory that's valuable to that person. We're asking them how they're feeling, how they're eating, how they're sleeping, if they have stress in their life. And every part of pregnancy is like this time release capsule. You have a certain set of things that um, you need help with in the beginning and different set of things in the middle and different things at the end. And you are being treated like a whole person, not just a vehicle for a baby. What's happening to you counts just as well. And um, 
I think the difference with the OBs is that it's very test oriented. The appointments are very brief and the reliance is on the tests, the, what the tests are saying. And which I think everybody can agree dehumanizes the woman. It just makes her kind of, uh, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Just a vehicle for a baby. In this process of learning more, what was clear to me is that birthing is a total business. Like hospitals are a factory. They're just trying to get you in and out as efficiently and fast as possible. And a lot of the decisions are not made for the baby or the mother or the family, but they're designed to be more efficient at making money, which didn't sit well with me personally. Obviously at the end of the day, it was my wife's decision, but I think this, this idea of like a factory was a, a woman as just a vessel to deliver this baby into the world was one of the reasons why she was so excited about having our kids at home. But then the more we dig, the more issues we found about like issues about the birthing process at hospitals. And, and the more we learned and did, the more, you know, a home birth advocates we became ourselves. Here, when you go to the hospital, uh, in labor, you're not gonna have, necessarily, you're not gonna have your own provider helping you because whoever is gonna be on the call at that day, they're gonna help you to deliver your baby. Through the pregnancy, you see the same doctor. You're not seeing m multiple doctors or, or every time different doctor from the practice. No, you're seeing the one doctor, uh, but then you have 50-50% chances uh, to have this doctor at your birth uh, because he or she just might not be on call at that day. And uh, how they present, if you want me to be at your birth, we can induce you this day, for example, as an option. And some people decide to do that, you know, because you don't want to have a stranger uh, on your birth, right? You want to be with someone familiar and you think, okay, well, let's, let's do that. Another reason, biggest reason uh, right now to induce labor, and I do believe that the induction is the worst thing that they invented, you know, uh, because I see how it, 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 never, it never works well without the reason. Induction should be there if like baby suffering, for example, like truly when, when, when we see that there is a um, true indications, you know, fetal heart tones or, or maternal uh, complications such as, I don't know, preeclampsia, for example, like serious things. Uh, the reasons such as your baby is getting bigger uh, and it's gonna be harder to deliver or um, you are just going past your due date, you know, you're 40 weeks already, you know, what, why, why to wait? Let's, let's just induce, even though full term baby in every single obstetric book I've read is from 37 weeks up to 42 weeks, you know, no one is waiting up to 42 weeks. No one is even giving you a chance, you know, to wait after like 41 weeks, they get induced around your due date. There has been a shift towards um, people laboring for longer without it being considered pathology. There are people that are in the hospital laboring sometimes for 24 or 36 hours. That didn't used to happen when I was a younger midwife. That never, ever happened. So there is a little bit of a change, but I think that the the interference starts even sooner, Taro. It starts when people are 36 and 37 weeks and the doctors and the nurses are starting to talk to people about being induced. And now we have in our culture this kind of um, psychological, I don't know what the right word is. There's like, when people get to 37 weeks, it, they, there's an active conversation that's happening about induction. And the, this causes women to immediately start to go into fight or flight. They may not recognize it, but they're starting to worry about 
having to have drugs that are going to make their contractions too strong for them to tolerate. They start thinking that there's no way that they're going to be able to avoid an epidural. And then that is putting them in a non-optimal state before they even go into labor. Well, I think that the, the difficulty comes when there is a system that decides what is uh, safe and what is not safe and the parameters are pretty small. And if you start to approach what's not safe, then you become monitored more closely. And that monitoring usually produces more concern, more fear, and more interventions. And this is a very regular occurrence every day in every city. And, um, I think, you know, from having interfaced with OBs and the medical community for many, many years now, these are wonderful people. They also have a dedication to what they're doing, and they really, truly feel like they're doing the best thing for people. But the system has very little wiggle room. And for instance, like when you go to the hospital to have your baby, there are literally eight to nine people who are taking care of you. And every one of those people has a job and they have a, a slot to fill in on their computer. And so there's just this busyness and no, no fields get left open. Everything gets checked. And that is s- such a disturbance to the birth process, to the woman. She is in her reptilian brain, she is in a a fight or flight state of being. Now, home birth might not be for everyone and not every home birth ends up at home. Some get transferred, Uh, but at the end of the day, like it's undeniable that the hospital system is also broken from the eyes of the the mother. And there's most hospitals, don't treat the mother and the family in an ideal way. After finding all this out, we decided to do a home birth ourselves. We found out that there's a lot of benefits of having home birth. As the dad and the guy, I just appreciated the logistics being easier than going to a hospital. And it was also also cheaper for our family despite having a good healthcare. But maybe it's best you hear from my wife on, on the female perspective on, on the value of home birth. So the reason I chose a home birth is I thought about the feelings that I wanted to have during birth and after. And I wanted to feel powerful, confident in my own body and its ability to birth. I wanted to feel at ease and comfortable in my space. I wanted freedom, which to me meant freedom to move about, freedom to eat or drink or do whatever. And I also wanted freedom over the choices of interventions during and after birth. And there's so many that we don't think about even just a cervical exam is an intervention or even taking your heart rate or certain things that really disturb the process when you're trying to go inward and trying to really focus. Um, And then there's all these unnecessary tests afterwards. And I just felt like a home would be the perfect place where I could choose whether or not I wanted to say yes to these things and whether I wanted to do them and I would feel like I had the autonomy to do that. After the birth, I can say that it was the most powerful, confident, assured, like I had so much confidence in my body and in my ability to mother. And I think that's so important going into motherhood is to be on this high of like, look what I did, look what my body did, look what I made. And instead of some some women I hear in the hospital, their birth is so defeating and they feel like such an accessory in this process that they feel like it was taken away from them. They felt so powerless and that can really bleed into the way you mother and could cause some postpartum depression and a lot of trauma that just, you don't need that on top of also dealing with a newborn. So I think this, this even if you have a hospital birth, being so aware of your power and your choices and trusting your intuition so much more than the doctor, um, because really you're the expert here. You're the expert in your body, you're the expert in how you birth, you're the expert in your baby. And so you can have a really powerful 
confident hospital birth as well that makes you feel like in your feminine and in your power. Most of the women I work choose to have a home birth because they want to feel empowered and uh, they want to be more connected to themselves and to the baby and to make true informed decisions, you know, when they have time, when they have ability, uh, when they have all the possible information together and make a decision themselves. I do believe that the primary caregiver uh, for the baby is mother and not the OBGYN or a midwife or a pediatrician because mother knows um, her baby more than anyone in her body. I became pregnant. My fiance and I were in Hawaii visiting two friends, Garrett and Nicole McNamara, who are amazing people. Um, and we mentioned, you know, the impending birth. And Nicole said to me, so you're going to do a home birth? And I said, oh, I don't know. I had already seen an OB a couple times. And while I knew I wanted a very natural birth, I didn't know enough to know that I like would really want a home birth. But she gave us a homework assignment to watch this video, the, the documentary, The Birth, uh, The Business of Being Born. And she had us read about 10 birth books. And Taro read five, right? And I read five. And we did our homework. And by the end of two weeks, we were fully committed and convinced that home birth was for us. You know, for me, uh, there are only benefits in having a home birth. <laughs> let's say it this way. Yes, let's start from the beginning. First of all, you are at your own home in, during the birth. Um, your bed, you are move, you're moving wherever you want to, like however you want to. I don't know, the walls support. It feels like, uh, I don't know, you feel more confident. Um, after the birth, this is so nice just to stay in your own bed and tuck in, have a baby, nurse the baby, go to sleep. No one is um, bothering you by any unnecessary checks or anything like that. Um, it is cheaper, absolutely, because um, I try to explain people, I mean, most of, most of the people are afraid of the cost because none of the insurance cover their home births, but it's still, most of the time, less than uh, deduction that people are gonna pay, you know, to the hospital. And uh, you get the personalized, individualized care, you know, at your own home. Postpartum visits, my goodness. I think, uh, I think it's inhumane to ask a woman and the baby within the first week, you know, to go to the back to the office, to go to the pediatrician, you know, and all of all of these places because I believe that women should stay in bed with the baby, just nurse the baby and. You know, and, and providers should come to her, and that's what you get when you choose a home birth, you know, provider and a midwife taking care of you and the baby at your home. One of the first things I hear from people that are not familiar with the concept of home birth when we said we did a home birth or planned to do a home birth was that, is it safe? And there's so much fear with women about something going wrong. They think that like, hey, if you go to hospital, nothing can go wrong, and again, Many things can go wrong in a hospital and home births are not any less safe. But how safe are home births and how safe are hospital births and what are the differences regarding safety? The fear is that anything can go wrong at any moment. My experience is that 99% of the time there are alerts that the mother's body gives or the baby's body gives that there is something out of order. And then it's up to the midwife to watch over that and have enough experience that she knows when it's time to do something different. There has to be a confidence and a trust that this truly is the way nature intended it, that we have, it's built into us to 
navigate the birth process both as the baby and as the mother without there being an emergency. If something goes wrong, you know, we have to stay humble. It's a birth, it's bigger than we all. Uh, we just transfer to the hospital. And um, here in Texas, uh, again, uh, no one is going to ask you, why did you decide to have a home birth? That's why you, you are transferring, or uh, that's why we're in trouble right now. Um, I've never heard this in my practice uh, because it's good to have uh, medical support when it's needed unfortunately these days we use it way much more you know than we need and the cascade of interventions are real when many women get into the wanton intervention and follow further and then they are saved by medical providers you know at home the interventions are minimal uh, depends on the midwife midwife to midwife obviously but um, I do believe when you let the body do its job everything's working and yes um, less than earlier it was less than two percent of a whole United States who had a out of the hospital birth not a home birth just out of the hospital it means a birthing center car births accidents everything and um, it shouldn't be like that and I am trying during the consultations or childbirth classes I'm trying to explain uh, each single what if you know like if the baby's I don't know heart tone is getting down or what if hemorrhaging what if all this um, small little complications that can happen and how we as a home birth midwives are taking care of it at home I'm not under the school of thought that every single person should have a home birth, but I do think that every single mom should really be knowledgeable about the process, what's about to happen, what hormones are going to be at play, what's her body going to do, what are the different stages of labor, and really know and become an expert so that if you're in a hospital, if you're in a birth center, and people are talking about you as if you're this accessory, you can really be like, aware and know and take your power back so that you can make really informed decisions about what you want for your body and your baby. So my one message to women would just to be to really take this seriously like this. Is, I know some women who didn't research or read anything until they're giving birth and it's like this is going to be the most rememberable day of your life and it's so important to know what's what's going to happen so that when it happens you're not it's not like a car accident where all of a sudden you wake up in the hospital and you're like, what just happened? Like, you really want to remember this day and to be in your body and in your power. I would recommend every woman to listen to themselves and listen to their God um, when they choose a care provider. And um, first of all, choose the place and then choose the care provider because um, just generally ch choosing a home birth does not mean that you're gonna get what you want and don't be afraid to ask the most uncomfortable questions from the very beginning ask uh, the provider about their own experience and uh, um, birth about the philosophy and the view on the I don't know life and death perspective. I believe that's important. One of my lessons is that women don't know their strength until they've navigated this whole experience. And it doesn't matter how your baby comes out. I mean this in the most genuine sense. It's transformational. It's going to change you and it's 
the potential for it to build um, so many virtues that help you be a mother, curiosity, resilience, all of those things come bit by bit from the time you find out you're pregnant until you finish the first year of your baby's life. And I am in awe of watching that process. It's nothing short of a miracle. And I think women have become so focused on um, just the baby being born safely that they miss all of that fertile ground that's there for them. And the other thing that I know is that women teach women better than anybody else. All of the wisdom that you need for getting through your pregnancy, getting through your early time with your baby is locked in your community. You have to choose carefully and you have to have the ability to kind of know when um, things are not nourishing you and kind of step back from them, but you can find so many answers just by sitting in a park with, with positive women who trust their bodies and trust the process. Just like with anything in health or business, I encourage you to not take this or any other source as the truth. Don't outsource your health and big life moments to someone else, but do your own research. Talk to multiple professionals, ideally from opposing views, and see what the arguments are and what feels right to you. Sadly, many people don't do any research or they rely on one or two OBGYNs for all the data they need. And that to me is like not that great for such an important life decision. Whether your family decides to give birth at a hospital, at a home, it doesn't really matter as long as you're educated. There's a lot you can learn from a home birth process even if you end up giving birth at a hospital. I just hope more people will be educated on such a big thing and take some of the hours they spend on learning about sports or TikTok dances or latest gossip in, in Hollywood and learn about such an important life moment. Thank you for watching. Hopefully you learned something. And if you enjoyed the content, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel and check out my other videos that you can find somewhere there in my profile. Thanks for watching. Ciao, ciao.